All right, today here we have a gyrus by Konami, or Century, whatever you want to, you know, it, it's, it's Konami. And uh, this one had just, the problem with this one is it has no sound. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. And it is now on. And it's not really that it has no sound. Every now and again the sound will come on. I will move you over here. Let's go take a look at the monitor. Someone's enjoying a snack. Right, Boo? <clears throat> here it is. And I will go ahead and play a game of it. And you'll see there's... You might hear sporadic sound. You might not. <clears throat> These controls are weird. And game over, and there was no sound. Yeah, it didn't, uh, no sporadic sound that time. So, and things I have done, I really haven't done anything. <clears throat> I got the Logic Probe out, I kind of poked around a little bit, but aimlessly. I cleaned three of the customs on this board that were the typical customs that get really tarnished. I cleaned those, but that that doesn't have anything to do with this problem. I just wanted to do that before the legs rot off. Get them cleaned up. <clears throat> so you can see the CPU side of it. Now I don't know. The first thing really that I want to do is make sure that this board is, these two boards are talking to each other right. I don't know if this board, the, uh, I don't know if the CPU on this handles input, output, and sound, or if there's some kind of handshaking going on between the CPU side of this and this board. I don't know how this works really, so I need to dive into that a little bit more. I just want to make sure that every signal that might be pertaining to sound is getting over here. That might originate from here. Um, what I do know is I have both the speakers hooked up, and when the sound would show up, it was uniform between both channels. Like both channels would show up at the same time, both channels would are off at the same time. So it tells me that this, that the uh, the actual sound circuitry, the actual sound like the uh, these chips are probably fine. I think this is totally just something that is controlling maybe the amps. It's some kind of control. So I need to get this, I got my schematic folder out. So I'm gonna dive into the schematic a little bit, look at the sound one. First thing I'm gonna do is I wanna verify 
that this board in, is speaking to this board properly every way that it should and once I do that then I can forget about this board because this is mostly graphics you know and it might do and it's also code the program code program code and the graphics and everything and then I think it just hands everything off to this to handle the input the outputs and the sound but though and I know that like when I control if this is the main CPU that is sampling the controls and everything see I don't know if that's this board or this board that would tell me if it is this board it would tell me that this board is communicating with over here you know the, the gating back to this to sample the inputs and everything but I think that's probably on this board this is probably the sound slash IO board and this is all program code and graphics that's kind of the way I'm looking at it but I want to verify that anyway so what I'm gonna do like I said I'm just gonna make sure that this these two boards are talking to each other right in every way that they can and then we'll, we can move on and then it'll be pretty much eccentric or you know ex looking at this board and finding out what is failing on that board so alrighty I'll be back when I let me poke around a little bit do a little research and then uh, if I find something I'll come back all right well after poking around a little bit I kind of came to the conclusion that it looks as if the CPU the Z80 on the sound board is stuck in interrupt and I put I set the dip switch so that the sound is on in attract mode and I sat and I, I probed the interrupt and everything and the way this do, uh, works is basically it looks like it's a software interrupt because it triggers a 1 138 to trigger the interrupt to take the CPU out of interrupt basically and if there's no program to run, the CPU is not going to run. So I'm kind of thinking this might be just a software issue. So I'm going to, I'm going to check the two ROMs. I'm going to check all of the ROMs, these, these ones too. But since this thing did kind of take off and run a little bit, I, I, it hasn't in a while, but it did at one point. I think the RAMs are fine and all that. I think all of the 8910s are okay. I just think we might have a flaky ROM that is messing up the works, possibly. But I want to eliminate that as being a possible problem because it doesn't look like the CPU, the Z80, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. So it looks like it's just kind of sitting in limbo and not running at all. So I'm going to go ahead and check that software. All right, well, after doing a whole lot of pulling up chips and trying stuff, I pulled all of these. I actually put known good working 8910s in this board, thinking that maybe it was, uh, I kind of, let's put it this way. This is a, a, a nice lesson to learn. Don't jump the gun. Do all of your probing and testing before just saying, well, I bet you one of these is killing the whole program. It wasn't these. Even though this is awesome to have all of this stuff socketed, this was all soldered into the board, everything here. And now it's all socketed nice and clean. But regardless, that was not the problem. I'll never do that again. I'll never just jump the gun and say, well, it's probably one of these. You got to probe everything on the board first. And these guys right here, these four 253s, are what handle the, the data. The data either coming in from the switches, dip switches, or the control panel. And um, that's basically data that's used by this board. Well, this guy right here, 
3D pin 9 you will see is no good that's this chip right here and if we probe the output on pin 9 right there's what it looks like that's what it looks like that is no good that's holding that data line high so we are missing a data line and just out of curiosity here's pin 7 see that's what it's supposed to look like but this output on pin 9 is no good well, that is a bad data bit and you'll see that pin 9 that should be driving low and it's not and it, that is connected to everything it's connected to the whole system it goes and latches through here to the CPU so yeah we're missing a data bit so I bet you I bet you I could jump a chip over that and it would come to life let's try that I am gonna to have to replace that of course but yeah so let's take a look All right, yeah, I jumped this uh, 253 over top of that chip, and it's just pulling the output of the good chip low. Or it's it won't let it drive low. See, if I probe, what I did here is I pulled this, uh, I pulled the lag up. So you can probe and see what the output should look like. And that's what it should look like right there. Instead, if I move this down to the leg on the soldered in chip, of course, that's, that's what you get right there. And we should be seeing something like that. And now it's just low. It just uh, must have lost connection. There we go. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to pull that, replace it, and see what we get. All right, looking at this, one thing to consider, remember that's pin 9 that was funky. It's connected to two other chips. It's connected to this. It's data bit 7 is what it is. It's the highest, highest data bit, most significant bit. It is connected to this latch. And it also comes up and it's connected to this 367 right here. So I think while I got this guy heating up, I think I'm just going to pull this 367 and the 374. Because it's one of these three chips. One of those three chips is corrupting that thing. It just looks, when we're probing it, pin 9 is bad. But yeah, but it's going to be bad over here too. And it's going to be bad up here. So it's one of those three guys. And I'm just going to remove all three of them so that uh, just save some time. I, I'd hate to pull this one and test it, and it tests good. You know, the, okay, well, it's one of these then. i got to get this back out, fire it back up. So I'm just trying to be a little efficient here. This is not the same case as doing this, just blindly replacing this. I know there's a problem. I know that there's a problem with one of these three guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock them all three out and we'll see which one was bad. My guess, if I had to guess with the law of averages, I would say the 367 up here. But we'll see. Okay, I pulled all three of these guys. That 253, the 374, and the 367 way up here and I put them all in my tester and they all tested good and I said say what and I got to looking at this and I was like oh yeah okay here's another one it also goes to 3C not just 4C it's also connected to 3C so I pulled 3C as well and lo and behold that's our bad chip uh oh, now it's testing good. Uh oh. Well, I'm going to take them, I take all three of these and put them in the uh, 
the uh, my other tester, the TL8866. Is that tests a lot more vectors, I think. I think it's just a better tester than this. So one of those has got to be funky. So we'll find we'll we'll figure it out. Something's going on. Well, what we have here is a failure to communicate. This is a bad trace from this guy. Address bit seven or address bit data bit seven from pin nine of this chip right here to pin ten of this thing. There's no continuity. Yeah, pin nine here, which I lifted this. Um, there's no from the pad over to here. There's no continuity. It's not. It's not the work either. It's under this. So I'm just going to run a jumper wire instead of messing around. I'm just, I'll just run a little wire wrap wire from pin 10 of this to pin 9 of this guy. Yeah, there's a, it's just probably corroded under here or something. So that's the problem. It's not a chip at all. It was floating because there's no, there's no connection there. So let me go ahead and do that. It's just a bad trace. After all is said and done, it's a bad trace. All right, and here is a little wire run from pin 10 to pin 9. And we'll hook up and hopefully our problems are gone. Yep, that was it. Twas it. Now I'm going to put the original 8910s back in it, make sure they're all good. Be right back. There you have it. Put some uh, one inch standoffs on the board. Went with one. I, I think the, uh, I think it was three quarters originally. I, I put one inch standoffs on it. Um, the original cable is good. It's all hooked up as it will be. Good to go. I'll let this thing sit here and run for a while. Play test it every now and again, of course. And all of the uh, 8910s are good that were in the board. So, actually, all the chips that I pulled were good. That one that, remember, it uh, tested bad at first and then it tested good? All those chips were good. So, I'm going to take a little alcohol and a Q-tip and wipe that red paint off. There's nothing wrong with those chips. It was just a bad trace. Sometimes, it's just a trace. Like uh, Sam over at Arcade Fix had a video, sometimes it's just a fuse, sometimes it's just a trace. And it takes you a long time to, to find it. Oh well, we got it. It's good to go now. So that's going to do it for this one, and we will see you on the next Classic Arcade Repair. See you later.